when you first walk in there, you're, you're, you're breathing heavy, and then you're relaxing, so you're breathing heavy. Once you start to calm down a little bit, and you kind of, so I try, not, I try to keep it on at least amount of time as possible. But it's like yesterday was just one of those days where I had, I, I was wearing it for like, like five hours. You know, it was just ridiculous. But it's, it's stuff that needs to be done. But that's what was funny about, you know, where he talks about, what the fuck are you looking at? Right. Oh, hello. Right. <laughs> I felt that. It's like I felt that. You got to check yourself. Yeah. And, and that's that's one of the key things, to getting through the grind of daily life. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, most of America is not doing something that they want to be doing. You know, and we got to live with that regret, that pain that yeah. we don't want to admit that, I fucked up. Somewhere I fucked up along the lines, and now I'm doing something for somebody I really could give a fuck about. Right. I don't like their attitude, and I'm frankly, I'm fucking a genius compared to this asshole. <laughs> and now I had to do this fucking petty work in my mind in order just to make a buck, just to get through till tomorrow, and I'm going to do it all over again. Yeah. You know? And but and and the real pain is if I really would have busted my ass when the time was appropriate. I'd be a lot closer to doing what I'd really love to be doing. Yeah. And that's the measurement of success. We all have something we love to do. Yeah, for sure. And we all have something that we're good at. If we can make those two things into the thing that we're doing to make money for, to live, yeah. that's, that's fucking success, man. For sure. Making money and doing something that we love to do, that's awesome. And if we can happen to be good at that... We're winning. That's winning as fucking uh, winning. Charlie Sheen said. <laughs> Charlie Sheen. But um, I I was going through that this week and that self examination, that self check. Yeah. To just you know what, just get through it. Um, look at the bright side. You know, there's way too many negatives to be focusing on, and and that's how you stand out because everybody's miserable. Everybody would rather hear that you're pissed off because then they feel better about where they are in this life. And uh, try to uh, ignore the fucking <laughs> ice cream man out there. That's the ambient sounds of Marineville. It's Marineville, so funny. As you're, as, you're trying to, as you're trying to do the, your own self-examination, is a fucking ice cream truck going off in the I background. I thought that was just the, the, <laughs> the psychosis of my own brain, like laughing at me. <laughs> this, is, this is what it's like to, to be in my brain. All the chaos going on. There's a clown holding a seal and the seal is holding my life in its I'm hand and it's juggling it <laughs> with flaming bowling balls and it's it doesn't it wants to drop one and it can't figure out which one to drop and the only one not on fire is my world so it's next in line <laughs> anyways so I'm at work and uh, I have to clear lanes with boxes coming down them by dropping them either into a trailer or on a pallet. Now, just generalizing kind of what I do. Um, the hard thing is to do more than the guy who's doing the least and not try to keep up with the dude that's doing the most. Right. Because I started off trying to do be the dude doing the most and I made way too many mistakes and I got into a lot of trouble because my frustration would kick in because I didn't see anybody else trying to do the same thing. So what I had to learn is where do I fit in reality as opposed to what I think I am in my own mind. Right. <laughs> because the idea that we have about ourselves... In your mind, you're the god of boxes. <laughs> well, my professionalism exceeds anybody else's right. ideas of, and their expectations that they have on themselves. And, it, and all that, that world, we, we need to get the fuck away from. At least I do. Because... The view that everybody else has about you is a far cry from the image that you have of yourself. And unfortunately, you got to kind of go with what everybody else thinks. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so I'm at work trying to clear these lanes, and I'm watching somebody who's got their area cleared. The volume of boxes coming down their lanes is far less than the ones that I'm dealing with. And I'm... I could be focusing on integrity, how things are being stacked, how clean my area is, as opposed to just pulling the box off the lane, which is what they're doing, and they're getting along just fine. And I'm thinking, you know what, fuck them. I'm, I'm, I don't want that dude to come over here and help me out. Even though he's running out of things to do, I don't want him to come over here, because I want it to stand out. Stay in your lane, motherfucker. Right. <laughs> And, and watch how much I'm working in comparison to how you're dragging your ass. And and 
my lead comes over to help me out in my section and I told him, no, don't do that to me, man. Oh, I appreciate your help, but I want that asshole next to me to know that he's being an asshole. <laughs> so I'm going to let it stand out. And besides the fact, I'm trying to lose weight. And the dude that's not doing shit is overweight. Yeah. <laughs> so in my head, I'm trying to stand out by by being the better man. Right. But what really boils down to it, and after I started thinking about my behavior, I'm the fucking big asshole in this picture. I'm fucking making all kinds of noise and... and saying, look at me, look how much better I am when I'm, I'm the fucking douchebag. Shut the fuck up and just do your job. Stop paying attention to what's going on around you and you're going to be happy. You know, and mind you, I have talk going on in my ear that I should be focused on. But I'm ignoring that conversation, you know, stirring up trouble on my own. You don't even remember what the podcast contained. No. And I had to go back and start it from, you know, where I lost contact with it mentally and get back you know where where yeah, I was at, yeah, yeah. where I was happy, and <laughs> once I realized that I'm going out of my way to make someone else look bad, that I had to realize I'm an asshole ten times more than that dude because he's just getting along just fine. You know, fuck yeah. it, I'm just gonna do my thing. I don't need to push myself. You know, and that's the secret. That's the smart guy. You know, because he doesn't, he's not worried about what I'm thinking. He's not going out of his way to help me out. You know, yeah, and yeah. he's b- fine. Just being him. Yeah. And I'm so not okay with being me, I gotta fuck up his world. I worked for uh, H- HSN, Home Shopping Network, uh-huh. and uh, they, they would pull the, the stuff would come down off the conveyor belts, and we'd have these, these like, uh, trolleys, conveyor belts, and then you literally could roll them into the trailer, you know, and the stuff would come down, and then you would take the boxes and you'd stack them, and then you'd have to stack them as they were coming, you know? And uh, sometimes it'd get going fast, I mean, crazy fast. So instead of stacking them this way, you just kind of push them off to the side. Right. And then, and they, they, would catch pull, later. And then they would pull it out. They would pull the the, uh, the conveyor out, and you would start stacking, you know, and take your time with it, you know. And that, when I first, the first time that happened, I, like, totally freaked out. I'm like, what the fuck are they doing, man? Do they fucking realize I'm only fucking human? You know, I'm getting all fucking spastic about it, right? And I'm like, fuck this. I'm fucking leaving, man. So I was going to quit right there. I was just going to leave. So I walk out and I'm and I'm like on the third to the last lane. There's like 57 lanes, trucks, you know. That are, and not all of them are full, but there's like 57 ports or whatnot, you know. So as I'm walking out, right, I'm walking. I'm looking over to the right, and every every truck aside from mine, they're all going through the same shit, right. man. So I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck is your issue, man? Get your ass back in there, and finish your fucking job. Right. So I turn around real cool and I, I walk back in. But you know, it, you get Stop to that thinking point. you're special. Yeah, it's yeah. like oh, you know, it, and uh, my first reaction was, oh, I'm gonna go over there and tell those motherfuckers. It's like a second, second or third day there. Yeah. You know, when I run the place, right. slow the co- slow the conveyor belt down. You know. And you you may be special. But no one else gives a fuck. Right. No, it's like they say, I don't care how big you are in your own home, but in the eyes of the world, you're nothing. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> anyway. All right. So, uh, I'm going to try not to... I don't know. Fuck it. I'm blatantly ripping off Adam Carolla's concept of totally topical TiVo trivia today. Except we're just going to call it the Netflix game. <laughs> We're gonna offend somebody, either There's Adam DeCarl or fucking Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> I just assume Netflix. Um, I don't know. I think you can talk about a product if you have no other sponsors that are gonna get offended. Who gives a shit? Yeah. You know? Um, what's the worst that gonna happen? They right. they delete my account. <laughs> they want to pay us money to say their shit. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. But anyway, okay. the difference being on their show do movies pretty much and on Netflix you got it all you got TV shows documentaries you know short yeah. film clips uh, I just finished uh, season 2 of Archer that was pretty good yeah yeah I like it yeah I'm doing Breaking Bad you're right such now. an asshole <laughs> you really need to jump on the good fucking shows man I know you've watched all of Breaking have you seen all 4 season 4 of Breaking Bad um uh, I'm not sure I yeah, know I've, I've seen a few yeah, we need to get into that you need to get into Walking Dead Need to get into Breaking Bad and anything else I say. <laughs> oh, is that how it works? Is, is that how this relationship works? You lead, I follow. <laughs> well, if you lead, we're just getting. You, if the going audience would have seen that conversation we had earlier <laughs> and how irate he got, 
I don't know how I do it, but I managed to hit the right buttons with this guy. You do. <laughs> I even told them we should leave this recording in, but uh, and I would have been okay with it, except <laughs> I had to make sure that everyone else gets to see how crazy you are and how crazy you make me. <laughs> My point is this: when it comes to those shows. They're super popular, and they are the highest rated shows. And I think we, as public personas that we're trying to be, yeah, that we we're should trying be talking to be. about what the general public is watching and paying attention to. Yeah, for sure. So, and uh, Breaking Bad is breaking all kinds of records. Brian Cranston won yeah. so many episode Emmys for those season four. And he is doing a phenomenal job. I've well, he's a good actor, too. You, said, you even said that check out the, uh, was it What the Fuck, where he's on there? Yeah, and, and he talks for, about the yeah. origin of the Breaking Bad yeah. concept. And and then on the Adam Carolla show, where he's improv with Adam, and ugh, he, he knows what funny is, and he can be a serious actor. He can play it straight. He's, he's really talented. Yeah, I liked him on Malcolm in the Middle. So funny. He man. was, oh my God. He knew how to make it be awkward. Yeah. And hilarious at the same time. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you knew anybody that had a dad like that, you were you were glad you knew that dude, but you never wanted to be him at home. <laughs> like fucking watching your dad. Like you go into, <laughs> you're dressed and ready to get, <laughs> go to school and get breakfast down and go get on the bus with all your friends and you're trying to shake the image of your dad in his underwears <laughs> your dirty underwear <laughs> fucking underoos with a white beater and holding the newspaper pissing with the door open <laughs> it's, it's hilarious you're sitting there trying to drop a deuce and he comes and pisses in the sink <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome um, I'm scarred so let's get into the Netflix game right? alright alright All right. yeah we can do that I'll start off okay you need any more hands? So I'll start dropping facts on you like like turds. All right, here we go. As punishment for getting a DUI, a hotshot lawyer is sentenced to community service coaching a pathetic hockey team. Initially, reluctant Gordon eventually transforms a ragtag band of outsiders and misfits into the number one team in the Pee Wee League, the overcoming Ducks. his own... Say again? The Mighty Ducks? That is correct, sir. I never even seen that movie. <laughs> I got all that from the from the fucking what do they call it? The trailers and they show on TV. Right. That's an old movie though. That's uh, Emilio Estevez, right? That was that yeah. was Emilio Estevez, and that was 1992. Wow, really? 92. Well, that's correct. I thought it was older than that. Wow. All right, your turn. Go. All right, here we go. It is one to zero. All right. Uh, this is a 1979 Australian dystopic action film directed by George Miller and revised Mad by Max. Miller. Damn that! See, I knew you were gonna do that, man. I knew I had to get more in depth. I didn't even mention. All I mentioned was he's Australian, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and right. you said 79, didn't you? What's that? 1979. 79. Yeah, yeah 79. Yeah, late yeah. late 70s. Okay, trucker Lincoln Hawk hopes to reunite with the son he in abandoned years earlier. Standing in Hawk's way is a boy's unforgiving, unforgiving grandfather who will retain custody of his grandson unless Hawk wins the prize money in a national arm wrestling contest. Oh, fuck. That's Sylvester Stallone. Correct. Um, I, I'll sit here for 20 minutes. I know the movie. I've seen it. Uh, I couldn't tell you what it is, though. Yeah, bro. Move on. I'll, t I'll take the law. Pass. I, yeah, I, I really. It's over the top. Over the top. That's right. Okay. All right. A savage journey to the heart. A savage journey to the heart of the American dream is a novel by S. Hunter Thompson, illustrated by Ralph Steadman. It's either um, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Wow. You're fucking mad, dude. But yeah. there's like two others. I would have gone with the others, but... Oh, damn a it. A group of misfit small-town children discovers a pirate treasure map and embarks on a journey. Goonies. That's correct, sir. 
Okay, a 1984 horror film based upon the 1977 short story of the same name by Stephen King, directed by Fritz Kirch. The film starts Peter Horton.